Hi everybody, James Christopher. This is Fanboy76, starting our new series, A Sweater and a Movie. I was going to call it Christmas and Chill, but I think it's like 50 degrees here. It's hardly chilly. But we do have a new cast member to introduce. This is Orbit Corleone. He is our brand new German Shepherd puppy. He's arrived just a couple of days. He's in very much either puppy rage mode or puppy sleep mode. And I picked him up wrapped around the tripod stand. So we're very much in a sleep cycle. Um, we've had the three dogs for the last, this is going on day three. I think everything's gone really well. And he has really quickly become a big piece of our family and of our heart. All right, buddy. Do you want to go down? Okay. So speaking of three, we have three dogs, and I'm wearing my Grinch Christmas sweater, my first sweater of the season. And I'd like to tell you I don't have them all marked on my calendar, but I 100% have them all marked on my calendar. And I wanted to talk about Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. And there are three adaptations that I know of. I'll be honest, I'm not really sure. Obviously, the original one from the 60s, like 25-minute uh, cartoon short with Boris Karloff as the voice, and then the Jim Carrey version, and then um, I think it's Benedict Cumberpatch in the other version. I'm not sure. Um, this is the one place where I'm not the world's best grandfather because it's actually one of Braxton's favorite movies, and I just can't bring myself to watch it. And I know that's weird. In part, because I think... Jim Carrey's Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or just The Grinch, is the best adaptation of that story. And honestly, it's one of my favorite Christmas movies. It's something that we watch every year. I love the idea that, first and foremost, they took this idea or this concept we do in movies all the time of the prequel. We have to show the backstory. And most of the time, that doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work in one movie, and sometimes it's your George Lucas, and you let it not work for three. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. But I actually really like how they fleshed out the Grinch's backstory. I, th I love the idea that he had two adoptive moms. I mean, how progressive is that? And the rivalry with the mayor, the whole idea that he uh, tries to give himself his first shave. I love all of that, because one of the things that's unique to most men is we're willing to do lots of stupid things for the women we love. I also really like how they took Cindy Lou Who's character, aged her up. She's not a baby anymore. And now she has a point of view and she serves as our window into this very, very weird world. Now, Jim Carrey is an actor who doesn't work for me most times. I love Ace Ventura. I thought Pest Detective was one of the worst movies I'd ever seen. Then I saw Dumb and Dumber and thought to myself, wow, people are paid to write these things. But his over-the-top antics and his energy really works in this particular film because of how over-the-top everything is. And so bringing all of that stuff together, I think really fleshes out this character that, is, if we're being honest, was pretty one note. And Ron Howard does a great job and putting a great cast together. And of course, if you give me Christine Baranski in a Christmas outfit that's a little more naughty than it is nice, I'm here for it. So speaking of being here for it, I hope you'll be back tomorrow where we're going to have a different sweater in a movie party. And I hope you're digging it so much that you're looking forward to counting down to Christmas with us by liking it, subscribing, following, you know, all those different words we have for the same thing, depending on what social media platform you're on. Anyway, stay with us. We're going to have a great time. We'll be back tomorrow.